we have some front row folks here. Hi, um, I am a marketer in the traditional. Proud of it. I am a proud, proud marketer, traditional and digital. Um, and I do tend to focus on human triggers um, as motivation for the work that I do. And there's a lot, but one that has me stumped is the idea of exclusivity as a human trigger. Okay. And we see it happening, right? Right. We see these, but I'm having a hard time getting my, my head around the recipe for that. Let me just be really clear with what you mean by exclusivity. We're talking about like supreme and, and luxury goods. Are we talking about what? I'm talking about sort of campaigns and approaches that drive people to action, that give them the perception that they're seeing maybe behind the red velvet rope, or okay. they, they're attracted to the thing that they, not everybody can have. Okay, so this is a, a juicy topic that I've been waiting to talk about. It's the thing I've been spending an enormous amount of time on for the last few months. Um, <laughs> Keith Johnstone wrote a book in 1964 called Impro that even actors and directors don't know about, and it's about acting and directing and education. And his argument is that all good theater, all good movies, all good novels, almost everything in our life that's juicy is based on status roles. And you're either high or you're low. Shakespeare all the way to The Godfather. So let me act out The Godfather so you understand what I'm talking about. Opening scene, the first movie. Can any of you visualize it? What's the very first thing that happens? The wedding, right? So the godfather's daughter is getting married. In the Sicilian tradition, on your daughter's wedding day, you must grant a favor if someone asks you for a favor. Who has the highest status in the land? The godfather. He has killed people to maintain his status. And in fact, his entire life works because he is perceived as having the highest status. He's sitting in his office, dark, oak-paneled, the Undertaker comes, 96 pound, Bonacera, little drip of a guy. Is there anything lower status than the drip of a guy who's the Undertaker? No, it's like a parody. So the Undertaker comes and he says to the Godfather, my daughter has been sexually abused, harassed, and her, the perpetrators went free. I want you to kill them. And then he has the temerity to say, I'll pay you. So now he's treating the Godfather like a hired thug. Status goes down. If Buena Sera pulls it off, his status goes up. And you can feel the tension in the room. He's about to be killed because he's done this thing, taken advantage of the daughter's wedding day to do this thing that will forever mark the Godfather as a low-status person. And it's a very complicated six-second edit. But what happens is the next thing you know, Bonacera's on his knees, kissing the Godfather's ring and saying, will you do me this favor, my friend? And pledging his allegiance to the high-status Godfather. So normality is restored. And the rest of the movie is just that, up and down, over and over and over again. So once you see status roles, you can't unsee them. And all you got to do is visit Southern California, any car lot, any, you know, what, what is the purpose of the front lawn? Why do we have front lawns? It turns out front lawns were invented in England in the 16 and 1700s as a way of saying to your neighbors, I don't need to graze sheep to raise a living. I can take sheep grazing land and waste it. Status, right? So exclusivity of almost any form is a chance for status. You saw the video before someone else saw the video. You have a Supreme shirt that sold out after six minutes. You got to fly in this part of the plane, not that part of the plane, even though the whole plane lands at the same time, <laughs> right? And so status is true. We can't deny it's true. So as marketers who seek to make a difference, we are allowed to use, in fact, we are required to use status to cause people to take action. So let's go back to Ethio Chicken. We could assume that everybody wants their kids to not be malnourished. And at some level, it's true. And yet, when you show up with chickens, not everyone's going to buy one because they have fear. And the fear is, what if I buy a chicken 
with food money and the chicken isn't great. It doesn't lay eggs. I can't tell, right? What will happen if that happens? I'll be in trouble with my family. But if we can add to this, all your neighbors have chickens already because they care about their kids. You got to do it because otherwise your status will be irreparably harmed. So you're not actually doing it to feed your kid because you, of course you care about your kid, but the trigger was I can't get left behind because the chicken guy's leaving town and if all my neighbors have chickens and I don't have chickens, it's going to hurt me for years to come. So we see it with the poorest people in the world and the richest people in the world. And we see it used as a tool to shame women and we see it used as a tool to break our democracy. It's all about what are these status roles and what are we keeping track of. So don't use it in an evil way because humans do. It's a big power and we have to own the power of how we're using this narrative to cause behavior to change.